Greetings folks and welcome to this week's Electromaker Show. This is your midweek update for all things Maker, DIY, Embedded and lovely. We've got a lot to get through this week, so without any further ado, let's go! So first on this week's show, we're going to have a section called Funding Website Things. That's almost a name. Beginning on crowd supply with the Quick Feather by Quick Logic. Now, Quick Logic make the chip for this board. This is the development board for the Quick Logic EOS S3, and I suspect that's probably why their funding goal was only one dollar. They just want to get this board out there, and they want people to know about it. And that's fine, because this looks amazing. It has an ARM Cortex M4F MCU and an embedded FPGA. That's right, FPGA, I can say it. And it appears to be targeting low power embedded machine learning, like so many boards are these days. The thing about this board that I really like is that it is 100% open source across the board. Did I just make a pun? I didn't mean to make a pun. No, as you can see, it's open source everything, and they mean it. This board was developed using KiCad, which is an open source piece of software. The operating system is also open source, as are the FPGA tools. The machine learning side is taken care of via TensorFlow Lite, which is of course designed to be used with embedded hardware. And yeah, just look at it. It's a really nicely designed board. Um, for those of you that are familiar with the Adafruit Feather, it is of course based on that, hence the name. And it has a lot of promising looking features. Alongside the powerful system on chip, there are some embedded sensors here, uh, an accelerometer and a pressure sensor, and a digital pulse density modulation microphone, PDM mic. Um, and it also has uh, the ability to use LiPo batteries and charge them. There's charging circuitry built into the board. There's a lot going on here, but it's all very good. I could talk about this for quite a while, but we have such a packed show, I'm going to move on. But if you want to support this, there'll be a link in the description. And at $59, for the amount you're getting with this board, I'd say it's worth it. And I'm very much looking forward to getting a hold of mine. Moving over to Kickstarter, we have the Zero Multi Power Supply. Now, uh, this is the second version of this power supply. I wasn't aware of the first one, and um, this is the first time I'm seeing it, but it looks great. It's a very simple, no frills attached, uh, multi input, multi output power supply that looks very, very well thought out. This board is simple, but it does seem to have been very well designed. You have multiple options for power input. So you've got a DC barrel jack, a LiPo battery, micro, mini USB and micro USB for the input. And it doesn't have to be five volts, if I remember correctly. The output, however, can be anything from 1.25 volts to 24 volts. Um, and so it's quite an extensible board. And as you can see here, there's a little display for showing the voltage out. One of the things that's certainly good about this board is its price. Um, NZ $20, uh, I don't know exactly why it's in New Zealand dollars, but anyway, that's about 12 euros and uh, I'll let you do the, uh, the, the currency maths for your area. Um, and there's another version which is $24 for the power kit with accessories. Accessories. No, they legitimately are accessories. It's a, it's a breadboard and a cable and a few jumper wires and a screwdriver. Um, if you need that, it's a handy thing to come along with it. And again, um, that's like what, three extra euros for that stuff. So they're really not charging very much. Um, this seems like a wonderful thing to pledge. Now it has already reached its goal. Um, I think it's actually beat it by quite a bit, if I remember correctly. Yeah, they asked for just over $1,000 and now they're up to $3,500. And yeah, this project looks great. Um, if you are interested in it, there'll be a link to it in the description. And uh, yeah, as I've said in last week's show, and I'll say over and over again, power is always a pain to sort out. And if this works the way that they're saying it's going to work, it's a handy thing for any maker to have. Moving on to a Kickstarter, which I think may be dangerous to your and my wallet. Uh, this one looks very, very promising indeed. It is the LotMax SC10 Shark, 3D printing level up. Um, but yes, this does actually look like it might be somewhat of a level up. It's very cheap and it seems to be very good quality. So let's have a quick look at what that means. Well, before even getting into the specifics of it, you can see from this thumbnail here that they're offering a 3D printer along with bicolor printing and a laser engraver and an auto leveler that are all designed to work with the same printer. Now, I know that the printer's base price is quite low, but I wonder how much it will cost when it's together. Oh, really? That much? Okay, that's, that's insane. That's, how are they doing that so cheap? So yeah, professionalism, sorry. Uh, yeah, this is insanely cheap. And if it can do what it says it can do, then it's amazing. Um, I suggest you check this out and make up your own mind about it because Kickstarter can be a strange place. As you can see, this goal has already been absolutely smashed. And those of you who are into 3D printing, those of you who maybe watch YouTube shows about 3D printing, Joel Telling, otherwise known as 3D Printing Nerd, has made a video about this printer and everything it can do and was impressed. Now, admittedly, they did send him this printer. It included paid promotion, um, but he's a very legit channel about 3D 
printing. I'm sure some of you are familiar with them already. So yes, the link to this Kickstarter will be in the description and uh, have a look at it, make up your own mind up. I think this might be a very, very expensive Kickstarter for my wallet to have discovered. Moving on to the QT Pi, which is a tablet enclosure for your Raspberry Pi. Now, it isn't actually for the normal Raspberry Pi board. This uses the Raspberry Pi Compute module, which is the sort of stripped back, just system on chip version of the Raspberry Pi. And this is a good thing because it is very small, very sleek, and it actually does just look like a tablet. They've got their own board that they're plugging the compute module into. This isn't just a case for your Raspberry Pi that happens to have a screen in it. This is a, a, an absolutely designed product around the Raspberry Pi compute module. And in fact, they could have probably just chose something else to put in it as the operating system and just ran their own form of Linux. And instead they chosen to go with the Raspberry Pi, which is quite nice. There are a lot of things out there that claim to make your Raspberry Pi truly mobile. Um, and some of them do work. And in fact, I've made my own, I've rolled my own sort of portable Raspberry Pi computer before, and it's been okay. But this is the first thing that's really grabbed me and said, this is a Raspberry Pi tablet, not a Raspberry Pi strapped to a screen that's pretending to be a tablet. This is a Raspberry Pi tablet. One thing I did quite like was the sidekick mode, which turns the tablet into a little touchpad and keyboard, and you can just plug it into any screen and use it as a computer. And um, again, Raspberry Pi, it's, it's just a Linux computer. It's a Linux tablet which is something that I know a lot of us have wanted for quite a long time. And again, there's been ways around it, but this could be a really, really nice thing. All of the early bird pledges for this board are gone, but they do have the overslept bird, which is sort of like a slightly later than early bird, um, which is about 168 euros, it says, um, uh, and whatever currency conversion that will be for you. And you will get the Cutie Pie tablet, which includes the Raspberry Pi compute module. Another thing I thought that was quite nice is that you can just get the board as in their PCB board that's designed for working with the compute module. So if you did already have a compute module, you could still turn this into a sort of DIY tablet project, which is kind of nice. Anyway, the link to this will be in the description. I've moved over all this stuff quite quickly today because we have so much to get through in this show, but I would suggest looking at every single one of these links. It's been a really good week for new stuff on funding websites. And uh, yeah, anyway, let's move on. Moving along, let's look at a few projects from this week. Now, in last week's show, you may remember Pixie. These are the new LED lights from Lixie Labs. And uh, you may be thinking, wait, is this not just another image of them? And it is not. This is a DIY project by TMCKAY, um, Tom, T. McKay, T. McKay. T. McKay, we'll go with that, on the Electromaker site. And what this essentially is, is a slightly larger factor DIY message board using WS2812B LED strips, which works in a similar fashion to the aforementioned Pixie lights. Now there is a wealth of tutorials out there for how to use the WS2812B strips, um, but not that many of them are this robust and show you how to make a fully functional scrolling text message board. But that is exactly what these folks have done. There is a very detailed instructions video as to how to do it, and they basically put together a fully functional library. The code for the entire project is on GitHub and the bill of materials is mercifully quite light. This project uses a Raspberry Pi Zero, but you can use any Raspberry Pi for this. And WS82B12 strips are still pretty cheap, especially if you get them from a site like AliExpress. The only other thing this project uses is a level shifter to shift through the 3.3 volts that the Raspberry Pi pins give to the 5 volts data that the LED strip needs. Um, but yeah, it's very, very simple and very well explained. Um, there'll be a link to this project, of course, in the description. And this really is a great way for beginners to get used to WS2812B LED strips, which are also known as NeoPixels. You probably heard them called as that. This is a great entry point. Check this project out. The next project this week is a 3D camera in the Raspberry Pi magazine, which is the official magazine of the Raspberry Pi. It is a detailed tutorial by PJ Evans stepping you through how you can make a 3D camera using two of the new high quality Raspberry Pi cameras, two Raspberry Pi Zeros, and yeah, essentially make a completely 3D photo or even video out of it. Now, um, as it says in this list here, the Google Cardboard is optional. But remember that making Google Cardboard is as simple as just downloading the plans from Google and cutting it out and making it yourself. This is a very detailed project and I'm not going to cover all of it, but essentially it will give you some great fundamentals about working with cameras in general, along with how you can set up a server in order to use them, which is the way that it's approached in this particular project. Both of the cameras are captured separately and then put together on a server that you can access via the browser. All of the code is here and all of the physical setup is here. And again, this is yet another fantastic beginner uh, tutorial for people who are wanting to get into working with cameras and Raspberry Pis. 
With the Pi Zero still being so cheap, I can get one for around about 10 euros around me. Um, and the new high quality camera not being all that expensive either, uh, this might be a good project to get used to the high quality camera if you've just bought it or a really good excuse to buy one if you haven't. Great Scott, he's done it again. Yeah, I know I featured Great Scott quite recently, but um, his latest video is fantastic for anyone who's interested in making their own DIY power bank. Now, um, I have amassed quite a few uh, batteries that are from the same source. They're from old laptops and all this kind of stuff. And I've always wondered about a better way of making a DIY battery pack. I do have one, but it isn't particularly good. And this is the simplest way you can make a USB-C PD delivery power bank using easily available boards you can buy on AliExpress for very, very cheap. Um, this video definitely goes in the category of insanely useful if you want to build a power bank and just amazingly interesting even if you don't. There'll be a link to it in the description. Moving on to one of my favourite YouTube channels. Um, this is Blitz City DIY. Um, if you're not familiar, she's been making fantastic videos about Arduino and music and where they intersect, so obviously very much up my street for a long time. And in fact, the first Arduino pedal that I made, I made by following one of her videos, or at the very least it was a, on one of her videos I saw it and then sorted it out. Her most recent videos about making circuits on paper is fantastic and it is everything I love about this channel. She does some fantastic work and I suggest you check out all of her videos. And this particular one is great just to see uh, that yes, you can use uh, a Cricut to cut out paper, put copper traces on it and make a circuit board out of just paper. Just paper. And it is a lovely project. By the way, for those of you that have never heard of it, um, Cricut is quite a lovely little thing. Very small cutting device, mostly for paper and stickers. Um, and yeah, for makers, it's a very lovely little thing. Great for making decals, great for making your own stickers, great for cutting very specific designs out of cardboard. If you're a card maker or someone who's arts and crafty in that regard, um, it's definitely something looking into. They're very reliable and quite cheap. Anyhow, back to the video. Um, this paper circuit was a test she was putting together just to see if it would work. And it has a simple blinking LED uh, circuit that doesn't use a microcontroller on it. Um, uh, in my opinion, this is a great introduction to her channel to see what she does, although she has had some much larger scale projects and I suggest checking back through her channel history as well. Um, but yes, uh, Blitz City DIY uh, circuits on paper. Fantastic video, there'll be a link to it in the description. It's that time again, folks. Time for the mystery. 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 Box. 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 Box competition. Now, for those of you that aren't aware, the competition we have on the show is a little different to other competitions. In this box is a variety of stuff. It is all linked to maker and embedded culture, but some of it's a bit old, some of it's quite new. Some of it is linked to microcontrollers that maybe aren't that easy to get, and it's just like a shield for them. Uh, that It might be useless. It might be completely useless to you, but you can still win it. And also, there's been some pretty awesome prizes already. So the things in this box might not be quite as useless as I've been led to believe. Anyway, so quick rummage, quick rummage that feels like a nice shape of a box this is a box i shall take out let's see what it is let's see what it is it is oh it's a 3d camera or a depth perception camera like think uh connect think the same thing that the playstation had um but this is from intel and creative the s300 depth camera well i'll, I'll look it up real quick and see what it's about Yes, this is indeed a depth camera made by Intel and Creative that you can use in your project. There is software to go along with it. I'll make sure there's a link to the relevant part of the website to get it. And as you can see from this video by Robbie Kandra, you can use it for depth perception with robotics, among many other things. We have a prize, now we need a winner. And the winner this week is Raz Pi Kid. Congratulations, we'll be in touch with you as to how to get this thing out to you. For everyone else, keep entering the competition by commenting on videos and just let us know what you're doing, what you like about the show and what you don't. But for now, that's it for the mystery box competition and it's time to get on with the rest of the show. Now, we don't really have your average tech news on this show, um, but there was uh, an article this week with the co-founder of NVIDIA, which I found kind of interesting. Um, I'm not going to go through all of it now, uh, but I will leave a link to this in the description. And if you're sort of interested in how NVIDIA ended up going from making graphics cards to making um, AI single board computers and the thinking behind it, this is a very interesting article. One phrase that did stand out to me is that Jensen Huang, who is the co-founder of NVIDIA, sees graphic cards and their domination in the gaming world as their first killer app, um, which is a weird way of phrasing it, but you can sort of see where they're going with it. They're really hoping to move outwards. Um, and uh, while we're talking about single board computers with AI, um, I recently wrote a uh, write-up on the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. 
um, which is on the Electromaker site on the MakerBoard Mondays. Um, every Monday I write about a different MakerBoard I've had experience with. Um, and uh, it really does seem like NVIDIA are moving into this because I haven't had a chance to play with the one yet, but the Xavier NX is an insanely powerful little single board computer, which does seem to really be moving them step by step away from just making graphics cards for gamers. Anyway, as I said, this isn't usual content for this show, but I did find it very interesting, so I'll leave a link to this article in the description of the video. And onto a section called, ooh, that's cool. We're getting dangerously close to having names for things here. There have been a few things that caught my eye this week on the internet, and one of the things that I'm sure you have seen because it's gone exceedingly viral is this little invention called the Barmaster 2000. I've now connected it to my smartwatch by the Bluetooth. So when I want to drink, the Barmaster 2000 automatically opens. I'll show you again. Okay, drink responsibly during lockdown, and let's look forward to the pubs reopening. Now this seems super cool. It seems like a fun idea, um, and okay, it's not exactly practical, but it's exactly the kind of silly way of using technology um, to, to kind of lighten the mood in a potentially weird situation, as I'm sure some of us will be in when things get very public again. However, I did notice something that when you click Order Now, it takes you to the Hayes Gen website, where there is no further mention of the Barmaster 2000. I think this is a very clever publicity stunt, and it absolutely worked, because I had no idea who Hayes Gen were beforehand, and I think if I ever have to buy a present for a family member again, I now have an idea. Um, unfortunately, it appears the Barmaster 2000 does not exist. However, there's nothing to stop us making one. It would actually be a really cool project though. If any of you out there have uh, a couple of spare servos and a protective mask and you do end up making something like this, please do let me know and we'll feature it on the show. Up next, the Brick Experiment channel. If you're not familiar, this is a YouTube channel that you will want to subscribe to. It's just lovely. It's doing fantastic things with Lego, um, making a variety of incredible things, and as you can see here, recently breaking a steel axle using nothing but plastic and Lego and Lego motors. Um, if you want to learn anything about how motors work and how torque works, uh, you will learn a lot from this channel, and the style in which the videos are made is very, very beautiful indeed. Now, this isn't the first time that the Brick Experiment channel has made a submarine, but the submarine Mark II is something else entirely. They are using magnet coupling so that they can actuate the uh, rotors on the outside without getting any water on the inside. Here you can see them testing the max torque for the coupling. The video shows how the device was tested to get it working, but needless to say, they do get it working beautifully. Um, yes, this is just a wondrous project and I would absolutely recommend anyone checking it out. Look at that thing, look at it. Now this is a confirmed Made Ian Smile project. And finally this week, YouTuber Scienceish has created a quadrupedal robot, which is designed specifically to destroy poison ivy through a tube in the groinal area of the robot. <laughs> this is the very definition of over-engineering a project. Um, I, I love it. Uh, this is, yeah, as I said, this is designed to kill poison ivy and it's a fully fledged working robot. It, there's no getting around that. This must have taken an inordinate amount of debugging and working out to get it to work like this. Um, I found it on the subreddit, the less than perfect robotics subreddit. <laughs> and again, it is a robot that does not deserve the name of being on the subreddit. Uh, this is a fantastic project. Uh, Science-ish is a channel with only 720 subscribers, amazingly. So let's see if we can help add a few to that. And there'll be a link to this and every other project that I have featured in this episode in the description of this video. <laughs> That's it for this week's show. Thank you all so much for tuning in. As I mentioned earlier, if you leave a comment on this video saying what you liked, what you didn't, or maybe just what you're up to, you will be entered automatically into the Mystery Box competition. But for now, I hope you have a good week. Stay healthy, stay creative, and I'll see you soon.